just a very quick update video really uh we're three weeks into lockdown at the moment um, and we moved the boat for the first time yesterday we've been at the first mooring for the bulk of yeah, yeah. we luckily we filled up with water and emptied waste like literally a couple of days before lockdown so we were in a good position to to not move but we had to move because we had no water and we were full of garbage <laughs> we were a good few miles from a tap so felt good to get that done yesterday and we're in quite a nice position now we won't have to move again because we've stayed by the tap yeah so, and we can get groceries here as well so. yeah in theory the lockdown ends on december 2nd we'll yeah. see how that goes but um but we're basically uh um this lockdown has been a bit different for us to the last lockdown um We've been coping a bit better mental health wise, and that's for a number of reasons. Um, I think one is because we it wasn't out of the blue. Like I think Michael kind of predicted it was going to happen all year. So. Because I, I personally didn't do well over the first lockdown. Really the only thing that I could concentrate on was taking care of base needs, like keeping us fed and everything. Like Which it was, didn't take enough time to no, it didn't, really distract it, you. It didn't take up enough time to keep me distracted from what was going on especially on like social media um yeah it was as i tried to disconnect from that it didn't really i didn't really have anything else to spend my time on it, joe had the edits yeah to continue to work on because we were behind back then too <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was a double whammy of the pandemic and the politics and yeah which were grossly interrelated this time <laughs> yeah. uh, this time this is the first time we've done the pandemic thing but but it was you know it was just a lot and your mental health like it was worse for you but obviously that had an impact on me as well yeah well and also the first one happened right as we were coming out of winter and i already have an issue with sort of winter time blues and seasonal affective disorder so as we exited winter and it was beginning to be spring and it was the time at which i would normally be kind of I wouldn't say recovering because it's not like it affects me so horribly, but it just, you know. There'd be hope and there was no hope. Yeah. Spring was always kind of my like, okay, now I'm coming out of the darkness and I'm kind of adapting and the longer hours of daylight are helping. And, and all of a sudden it was like we said, we had to spend all that time still indoors. So, so for me with the kind of precognitive feeling that like there was no way we were going to avoid a second. And it was going to be, that coinciding with the days getting shorter it was potentially going to be worse yeah it's just historically it was like this is absolutely going to to you know we're going to see numbers start rising again as we get into autumn so we should sort of prepare for that fact move during the summer and set up some mechanisms and some things to to sort of have in place for when it occurs so that i especially have something to do um because when joe's just working on the edits there's like there's nothing for me to engage with basically like i decided to have something in my pocket this time which was um having some coursework like some directed coursework to do i've been working on an obscure version of a 1970s era video game made for use in a linux terminal by like seven nerds um, and if I haven't been doing that, I've been helping package up her stuff to take it to the post office. Yeah, because the other thing that happened in lockdown is that David from Cruising the Cup very kindly featured us in his video, which was um, really uh, to support boat-based businesses and give his viewers, who he has a lot of, um, some kind of gift ideas. So to support small businesses rather than just buy from Amazon. Um, and he didn't tell us he was doing it. No. And, so, <laughs> and so suddenly all these orders started to come through to um, Anna and Kath who, from Narrowboat Experience who have the host their, our map on their shop for us. And yeah, this coincided with a little bit of a change in our working relationship with them as well because before October they did all the packaging. They had the maps on their boat and they packaged them up and posted them. Um, but for various reasons we've moved the packaging um, onto our boat so we had to get hold of all the envelopes and backboards and um, get the maps delivered here. So that change happened. We knew like how 
like how much work they'd done for us. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly it was really visible as we were sat here packing map maps, like what it actually entailed. Yeah, well, because we'd, we'd ordered enough thinking... That we'd get through to Christmas. Yeah, we bought the, the envelopes and shipping stuff based on what we thought had been the sales last year, thinking, you know, hey, okay, there's a new map, maybe there'll be a little bit more. And, um, and yeah, so that was a surprise. So David's video went up and then that was like just over a week ago. So basically this week we've been just packing maps. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got the portrait one, which is the new one. I don't think that's going to come out. Um, and they go on a backing board and in this cellophane. So it's a case of getting a map, putting it on the backing board and slotting it in there and then sealing this. And then because we've got the uh, landscape map as well, there's two different maps to package. And then on top of that, we've got the Birmingham Canal Navigations, which is an A4 map. And some people order a combination of them. And then once they're packed up like this, they then go into an actual envelope that's do not bend. So it's like a multi-step process. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so the order's kind of exploded. Yeah. Instead of getting the individual emails after David's video, I think she waited a couple of days and then we just got a spreadsheet for the orders, which is just a lovely problem to have. But it kept us really, really busy. And yeah. the, the other change that happened is... Um, that we made in October is that we set up the US maps to be printed on demand in the States and shipped from there. Um, so if you order from the States, you're not actually getting one that we packaged, you're getting one that was printed um, there. And there was a number of reasons we did that. Mainly the reason was that the postage just got very, very expensive to the point where yeah, you'd oh, be yeah. paying more for the postage than you would for the map, which yeah. just seemed crazy. Um, but, and the other reason was the paper sizes, I think, are slightly different over there. So the maps that I do are A3 and A4. And those are relatively hard to find frames for, frames for in the States anyway. It was probably going to be more convenient for people to get ones in U.S. sizes. So we had to redo yeah. the artwork to, to fit the U.S. size. And, and, and we, we, you know, we were getting prepared for that. But then on top of that, yeah, with COVID, the shipping costs have just gone yeah. insane. So it just seemed the most sensible thing to do. Um, and that seems to be working so far. My initial, you know, sort of way of trying to get through the first lockdown was to concentrate on some self-directed kind of um you know reading books and preparing for for more computer science related things that i'm interested in basically like i decided to have something in my pocket this time which was um having some coursework like some directed coursework to do and it was yeah it was really hard for you to to work out what that was oh no yeah, yeah it was something that i had to because it has to be something that's engaging enough that i can't sort of let my mind wander and and i found this course through harvard called the cs50x which is like an intro to computer science this might sound strange considering i do programming for a living or did programming for a living um but i was i'm self-taught you know i didn't do any form of of significant school or academic based learning about programming i i basically taught myself so i had this feeling of well Maybe I should at least try out and see what, you know, it would be like in an academic setting. And this course had been, you know, really quite widely recommended over the last couple of years. I'd see people saying this was a really good course, even for people who were self-taught. It would kind of take you into some directions you hadn't seen before. So I thought, OK, I'll sign up for it and do that, you know, through edX, and which is an online educational site. And uh, yeah, so I, I basically just threw myself into that and um, turned out it was you know, I've self-taught myself enough that the first few weeks weren't. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be like an eight-week course, and I think I did the first, well, it was an eight-week course, and then you get a couple of, like a month to do your final project, and I buzzed through eight weeks in eight days, um, and so it was like, well, I guess I'll just concentrate on that final project. And it's really beneficial because you weren't kind of pulling your hair out with what to do. You were like excited to get up in the morning and, and get on with it. Yeah, yeah, and, and so really right up until the day before yesterday so the day before we moved i've just been plugging away at doing this um somewhat silly project i made a text-based version of of uh, of all things space invaders 
Yeah, and and it will only work on Linux, and it will only work on it might work on Mac, but I haven't tried it yet. But it but it, it, it will definitely not work on Windows, and it's you know archaic because you're you have to open up the the terminal like a hacker in a TV show to play this game, but um but it you know it it took up some time. And I got through the, the the bulk of the last few weeks by concentrated on finagly little details of the original arcade game and how I could make mine, you know, so sort of represent that. And... Every uh, every day or every, like, some days it was a couple of times a day, Michael would be like, can you just come and have a go on this? Yeah. Like, I'd stop editing and I'd go over and I'd Sit down and try and kill aliens and she'd be like, this is no fun. And they'd be like, well, why not? And say, well, because I can shoot too fast. Okay. So... Come back an hour later. How about now? Yeah. And then I added sounds and I just started yeah, annoying just... the heck out of you. Because all of a sudden she's trying to edit and she'll hear this like thunk, 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 thunk. Yeah. So, so but yeah, people always ask, what does Michael do? So we thought we'd share that. And as part of the project, you had to submit a video about the project. So we'll put that at the end of this video as well. And then in the description below, we can link to where you can, um, if you technically minded get hold of it on GitHub, is it? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and heck, if you want to, I'll We'll put in a link about CS50. So you can take a course in Intro to Computer <laughs> Science if you're interested. Part of the reason why I was doing this CS50 course was because after the last lockdown, I kind of struggled quite a bit with what I want to do in the future. And, you know, a lot of it is is we've got kind of a year's worth of travel left before we're finished the network. And we've done, you know, sort of everything. And we keep getting asked, you know, what are you going to do next? So we'd always had this kind of five years on the boat or five years doing this. And then there was a question mark and we didn't know what that was going to be. Like it could have, it could literally have been anything. And it still can, like nothing set in stone. Yeah, nothing set in stone. But, but because we were getting to sort of, I wouldn't say the light at the end of the tunnel, but like at least, you know, because I've... It's not like we're looking forward to finishing the no. system. It was just more that we were kind of... We know there's something... Yeah, when you look at the map that we've drawn out and we and we sort of have the Sharpie where we've gone, there's only so much left. And we're not going to do it twice. Like, right, no. Yeah. We don't want to do mean, bits twice, but it's it's the end of the journey. It's the, it's the end of the quest to get to the end of the canal. So yeah. My portion of this and the, re the driving reason behind why we're doing all these videos is to get through this whole system and now we're finally going to be kind of coming to the end of that in a roughly a year and a bit as we get closer to the end i start having more of a sense of that question you know an anxiety around well what is the future i have loved movies and visual effects most of my life I'm, i got into movies and visual effects due to this love it was why i picked up photography and why photography led to cinematography and cinematography led to film school you know and all this sort of stuff um, but after sort of a decade and a half of working in the industry and actually helping make movies, I sort of started realizing that like, if I look back on my credit list and the list of things that I've contributed to, it's mainly been the death of culture. Thanks to Michael Bay. So I'm not really, you know, feeling like, um, that's necessarily my way forward. And, uh, and so that, exploration within myself has been part of this trip. Like while we've been going, I've been trying to figure out what do I want to do next. But one of the things you miss about working for those companies is the people that you get to interact with, like yeah. the, the brains that you get to interact yeah. with. That's well, been I mean, missing on... Yeah, I've had this level of, of intellectual interest through work. Since leaving work, I find myself not quite so engaged in no. those conversations and that has been kind of starting to wear on me, you know, like there's only so much I can do uh, from inside of a boat mm -hmm. to have and engage with the sort of things that I'm really interested in. So I've been trying to figure out the kind of next step on my personal development. And I think what has become the focus of that over the last little while is the idea of graduate school and, and returning to academia in a completely unrelated place from my original degree <laughs> and, and and doing a comp sci program in, in a master's and potentially a PhD in computer science. It turns out that there's a lot of schools in England that I could actually uh, go to 
Um, and, and it would be of great interest for me to do that. So I've been trying to figure out, you know, kind of what is, what are the steps to do that? And part of that is dipping my toe back in to try and figure out what, you know, sort of formal CS looks like. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was. That's why you did the. That's why I did the Harvard class. And it was like, oh, okay. You know, certainly I think I have a lot of experience, which makes it so that I pretty much can do anything that undergraduate computer science programs would teach you so there's this you know trying to gauge my own interest in 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 what would a, a, a graduate degree provide for me in terms of a taught graduate degree and where would i be able to go in terms of research and what sort of that future might look like so and how, how you access that from the qualifications and the industry experience that you've had in terms of yeah well i mean one of the funny things is is um you know certainly the the sort of normal academic funnel where you you go in and you do your undergraduate degree and then you go into a more focused graduate degree and then a more focused doctorate um sounds sensible if you start in you know yeah. computer science or math and you go into a master's degree in computer science or math well i've got a bachelor's degree in film and then 20 years experience of of working in the film industry, using. not making films, but using computers. Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's like this, this, this drastically strange thing where, where, you know, I look at the websites and they're like, well, you need to understand things about, you know, uh, vector mathematics and matrices. And I'm like, well, that's pretty much everything that I've done. And yet at the same time, you don't tick the boxes in terms of formal education. Yeah. So. Well, I sure never, you know, I mean, I, I never took a course in them, um, especially when it comes to matrices, somebody was just like, you know, hey, you need to know about this to do this thing. Like, like I literally, I had to look it up and say, okay, what the hell's a matrix? You know, I'm like, oh, is that? I mean, I knew what the the t the movie was, <laughs> but I didn't really know anything about you know the math, and and it was just like, oh, yeah, okay, I can figure out how to use that, and and you know, and I've I've made a career out of so if any of effectively our... doing things with computer science, but I've never you know, but I'm a I'm a film school graduate with oddly enough a whole bunch of biochemistry, organic chemistry, and, and um, you know, physics-related early credits, which doesn't make any sense to anybody, yeah. including me. Yeah. So, you know, if anybody has a background in academia, especially when it comes to CS, you know, computer In British science, universities. Yeah. Um, especially if that university is, like, near a canal. Yeah, because the thing I'm trying to figure out right now is, is, um, is what would it look like to be able to return first there's the how do i get around the grand filter of of you know um not having an, a related undergraduate degree you know one of the things that i've learned in my own research is that i might need to get a level maths uh here in england actually get that qualification in order to even be able to sort of show up at the door so it's pretty exciting i think mm -hmm. um and it's not obviously set in stone like you know, this, there still is the option for us to do absolutely anything, but this is kind of an exciting prospect, really. Yeah, it is. And it opens up some possibilities in terms of what we do sort of going forward, you know, with the boat, with the videos, with, you know, with sort of what. Yeah, because um, you'd be looking to start in 2022. So two years from now, just under two years. Yeah. So we've got time to finish the system we've got time to earn a bit of money beforehand potentially we've got time to maybe travel beforehand if we're allowed to travel in early 2022 yeah and time to move our boat towards where i would be going to school it's it's one of those things where we just wanted to kind of catch up on lockdown really yeah Cause our lockdown because our videos are so behind like if we talk about this now and don't put it out till the new year like yeah so, yeah yeah even when lockdown finishes i don't think we're gonna start moving that much so i should be able to catch up again with the videos i'm definitely trying so thank you for being patient and i just had such an overwhelming amount of support from saying from people saying don't stress just enjoy it like we, we can wait so that was really really lovely yeah. thank you to everyone who's bought one of our maps um really like it blows my mind that they're on people's walls like especially how many are on people's walls now yeah. and like thank you for david to david for for supporting for flooding us with, with a large amount of <laughs> michael's material. not happy with you but i'm very grateful <laughs> not that i'm not happy with him i'm happy with him i just wish he'd given me a little warning and yeah just like just another example of how blooming great this community is that you know he not just supported us but all the other people he featured as well yeah so really really nice 
So yeah, thank you. And check out Michael's game. And if you're <laughs> if you're on Linux and you have a Unicode en enabled terminal with a grand total of a minimum of 40 columns vertically <laughs> of text. Listen. So you've got to have a relatively small text font. Anyway. <laughs> let us know your high score. If you've got it set up, let us know your high score. <laughs> uh, and when you find, you know, the, yeah, don't ask for too many hints on how to do the Hadouken. But oh, yeah, let us know what the uh, if you can figure out how to get the Easter egg. Which, well, I, I'm like, thing. I had this like last minute, hey, I could add that. So, you know, if, if you have a hyper specialized setup on your computer or you don't mind installing things on your own, it's on Python, pip install, but, uh, but the sound won't work and you probably won't be very well set up unless you've done a whole bunch of cherry rigging. Yeah, which probably won't be worth it, but it is a good game. Yeah, it's fun once you got it running. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for watching. <laughs> Let us know your high score down below. Yes. Which can't go beyond 9,999 anyway. So, you know, good fun.